If we return in our Bibles this morning to the sixth chapter of Ephesians. I want to consider today verses 10 through 17. chapter, verses 10 through 17. God's word read, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers in the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all to stand, stand, therefore having your lungs girded with truth, and having on, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And again, verse 12, our concentration will be, or we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness in this world, uh, of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Thank you. You may be seated. I simply want to title the message this morning War. War. Some of us may remember, others might have heard about it. Back in the day, there was an author, called, a singer called Edwin Starr. And Edwin Starr, his most popular song, was considered a protest song at the time he did it. And it was called War. All right. And some of the lyrics, I won't go through all of them, he said, War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Right. He said, War is something that I despise because it leads to destruction of innocent lives. War means tears of thousands of mothers' eyes as sons go off to fight and lose their lives. All I right. said, War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. He said, it ain't nothing but a heartbreaker, friend, only to the undertaker. Mm -hmm. War is the enemy of all mankind. The thought of war blows my mind. War calls unrest in a young generation in induction and destruction. Who wants to die? All right. Mm -hmm. War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. It ain't nothing but a heartbreaker, friend, only to the undertaker. War has shattered many young men's dreams. Made them disabled, bitter and mean. Life is too short and precious to be fighting war these days. War can't give life, it can only take it away. All right. And he reminds us again, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing. He asks for peace and love and understanding. He says, is there no place for them today? They say we must fight to keep our freedom, but Lord know there must be a better way. Amen. That, when the other star did that, he was reviled and rebuked by the nation because we were at war in Vietnam at that time. But I still say today that war is still just as deadly as it ever been. And I'm talking about a physical war right now. Amen. When we hear the facts and figures of the research of physical and psychological death and destruction of war, we can hardly take it in. More importantly, we are we in this country have been blessed. And other than the Civil War, we've never had war on our soul. All right. And I can tell us huh, from first hand experience, we don't want war on our soul. That's the last thing we'd like to have. Uh -huh. The Civil War was bad enough because in that war there were six hundred and twenty thousand killed. Yeah. Four hundred and seventy six thousand were wounded and over four hundred thousand captured. All on our soul. 
That's why I said we don't want war on our soil. I'm not a proponent of war anyway, but we definitely don't want it at home. During that war, the Civil War, one-fourth of the soldiers that went to battle, one-fourth never returned home alive. Amen. At the outset of the war, neither the Army, neither Army of the North or the South had the mechanism for war or to handle war. So more often than not, when soldiers got killed, families didn't know about it, right. sometimes for generations. And they only knew because they didn't come back. That was a war on our soul. It's a human disaster, yes, war right. is. Mm -hmm. And when we look at wars that we participate in since the Civil War, you know, you would have thought with the Civil War we would learn our lesson, mm -hmm. but we didn't. We went to war, war, went to war, 1917, World War I, there were 116,000 Americans killed, 116,708 Americans killed, 204,002 wounded. The Korean War followed in 1955, 407,316 killed, 670,846 wounded. I'm sorry, it was World War II. Then Korea followed that in 55, World War II in 1940, 41, 42. The Korean War in 55, 33,000 killed, 651, uh, 103,000 wounded. Then came the one that I'm familiar with, old too familiar with, the Vietnam War, 58,202 killed, uh -huh. 303,704 wounded. Mm -hmm. And we can't give the numbers on the, the Gulf War because we don't have them in. We can't right. give the numbers on the Afghanistan War because we don't have those in either. Mm -hmm. <coughs> those numbers may not be as great, but they're still just as deadly. All right. Vietnam I can talk about because I was there. I was there. 3,094,000 Americans served in that war. Mm -hmm. 3,094,000 served in that war. Some were at sea, and I told you already about the 58,202 casualties that were there. Two, and even today, there are 230,000 plus still missing in action. All right. That's treacherous enough. 35,504, or six out of every 10 killed in Vietnam were under the age of 21. 17,539 were married men who never came back home. And I can attest to that, I had a brother-in-law who was in that number. Mm -hmm. And even in Georgia itself, there was 1,581 killed in that war. <laughs> I have high school friends right here in Marietta that I went to school with who went and never came back alive. There were 75,000 severely disabled, 23,000 plus 100% disabled in the Vietnam War only. 5,000 plus lost limbs in that war. 100,000 plus lost multiple limbs. We look at the terrible price and the emotional, terribly emotional, physically emotional price of war that we paid for that war. We sometimes breathe a sigh of relief and say, thank God, the war is over. But I got news for us this morning. The war is not over. Right. As deadly as that physical war was, as hard as it hit us, as some of us are still dealing with the residual effects, the war is not over still. Right. That war, to some degree, may be over to a great degree. But unfortunately, war itself is not over. No. This is only true when we say war is over, when we say thank God for Son, Jesus Christ, because He is our battle axe. We talked about that a Sunday or so ago. Yes, yes, yes. He is our battle axe. And right now, true Christians don't have to fight wars any longer. Why? Because we have someone to fight these wars. Well, what wars are we talking about? The Lord is not going to fight it. No, he's not. I'm talking about a spiritual war right. that we are having to contend with right now in this nation. More people are getting damaged and destroyed by the spiritual warfare right now than all those other wars put together. What do you mean? Look at how drugs, and that's a spiritual matter. Look at how the other nonsense is going on in this world right now. That's all spiritual matters. 
in our scripture told us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. Amen. I didn't even pause to say that some of that spiritual wickedness may be in, in our nation's capital. That's created some of this animosity. But let's take a look at war according to, and give thanks to Dr. Tony Evans for his brief excerpt on that. He tells us that God created the angels to minister to the world. He would speak them into existence. Satan chose angels to, uh, uh, Satan, God's chosen angel, responded negatively right. and were rebuked. But even in the process, he took one third of those angels with him out of heaven right on down to hell with him. Yeah. After God kicked him out. God blessed by creating man in his own image. Satan rebelled by enticing Adam and Eve to sin, which allowed him to take control of the earth. Spiritual warfare, y'all. God blessed by providing a, uh, and covering Adam and Eve's sin to bring them back into fellowship with him. Satan provoked Cain and Abel to kill, uh, Cain to kill Abel in an attempt to cut off God's blessed line. Spiritual warfare, y'all. God blessed with the birth of Seth so that men could start to call on his name and trust in him. Right. Satan responded by causing Nimrod and others to try to build a tower to reach all up to heaven. And God said, I can't put up with this. But spiritual warfare, y'all. I'm, I'm going to meet your tongues uh, so we can't even communicate with each other. Spiritual warfare, y'all. So you see, it's not new. God blessed calling Abraham to father a nation to be holy. And to separate, uh, to set apart for his use. Satan riled up another Pharaoh who did not know Israel and put them all into slavery. Spiritual warfare, y'all. God bless Moses and lead his people to the promised land and even drown Pharaohs in the process in his pursuit. And the rest of the Old Testament is about God blessing while Satan continued to rebel. Spiritual warfare, y'all. Again and again and again. But it didn't end in the Old Testament. There was a silent period there, 400 years between the Old and New Testament. It's called the Intertestamental Period, when God didn't talk to anybody at that time. All right. Uh -huh. And some said, well, we had peace. No, we didn't have peace. The devil was still busy. But finally, God opened the New Testament. When he opened the New Testament, he gave his only begotten son, sent him to the earth, that he might fight the battle for us. Yes, yes. But what happened? Satan got in man again. Uh -huh. And what do we do? Hug him on the cross. Right. Between heaven and earth. Hug him on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. But even before that, Satan went to him and tried to get him to rebel in the wilderness. He said, let, let me tell let, let me tell paraphrase. Uh -huh. Let me tell you what I give you. If you praise my name one time. Yeah. Spiritual warfare, y'all. Satan resorted to orchestrating his big guns, causing Jesus to be killed on the cross. However, he didn't realize that death on the cross would be the greatest tactical error of the war. God bless again, raised Christ from the dead, which defeated Satan, death and hell. This has allowed God to offer us the victory over Satan, who is still trying to destroy us through his deception. Don't think the war is over. Don't think the war is over. It's still going on today. But it's in war for our minds right now. Yes, and not only us, but especially our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. Okay. Even those that have been born, Satan has lined enough stuff against them already. All right. yes. War is still going on right now. All right. You say, well, but let me tell you, I'm not having these kind of problems. If they're going on in the world, they're our problems. It may not be your child yeah, who's actively involved in it, but if the child is out there that's involved, it's our responsibility. Right, because God has called each one of us to do a job. Yes, yes. In Christ, Satan no longer has the authority over us. His only weapon is deception, and he's very adept at using that weapon. Satan wants us to believe that there is no Satan. 
And there is no spiritual warfare. Why? Because he wants to continue to try to fight the physical fight with our own strength. And when we try to fight the physical fight with our own strength, we're going to lose anyway. After all those wars we've been through, if that didn't tell us our own physical strength, won't do it. It won't do it. It didn't do it before in World War I, World War II, the Korean War, Vietnam, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan. It didn't do it enough. What makes us think today that the effort that we put forth is going to make a difference? What makes us think that? What we need to understand is that in doing so, we can do, we cannot do what God created us to do if we keep paying attention to what Satan is trying to get us to do. This is not to minimize the severity of the physical war or the pain of the casualties of the violence that's caused by drug, sickness, disease, setbacks, disappointment. But I'm simply reminded that physical war even has even have a spiritual root. Physical wars even have a spiritual root themselves. When Christ died on the cross, he was buried in the ground. He went down to hell. He fought the battle of all battles. God raised him up victorious. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father. It is time to end the physical battle, the physical battles with our contentious and disagreeable spouses, unruly, wayward children. Crazy acting bosses, silly acting co workers, backstabbing friends, funny acting neighbors, gossiping, unspiritual acting church members. Our texts tell us that we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places, evilness. In other words, the war is still going on. All right. But in light of the truth, we need to engage our sixth sense. Our sixth sense, which is a spiritual sense. Well. And start doing things in a spiritual fashion. All right. When you fight physically, all you get is a bunch of beat up bloody people. Yes. And the devil claims the victory. Yes. Amen. We cannot win a spiritual warfare with the physical solution. We've tried it and it hasn't worked. Satan wants to prevent us from taking it to the spiritual realm or taking the spiritual realm seriously. Why? Because he can't function in that realm. He can only function in the realm where we are right now. He don't want us to take it higher. Why? He's used to that. He knows it. He also knows that he's already lost the battle. He's already been condemned to hell. So what he won't do is take a many folk. Listen, when he left heaven and took one third of the angels, that wasn't enough. It's your children, my children, your grandchildren, my grandchildren. Those he won't take with them also. He said, I might not can touch you, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take all the kid folk that I can. Why? It's a spiritual matter. It's a spiritual matter. We have to understand that. But I tell you, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Amen. We can thank God on this very day that we don't have to fight those battles the way we fought them in the past. Why? Because in the past, we did all we could to offset the enemy. Yes. Jesus has already done all this this time around. Amen. We don't have to do it anymore. He's already done it for us. Yeah. We just got to put our trust and our belief in Him. All right. Trust Him to do what He's doing. Yeah. Don't you know when He died, He came back. Then when he, he left and went to heaven, He said, I'm going to sit down on the right hand of my Father. Well, what's He doing? Taking it easy? Rest and recline? No, He's not. He's sitting there interceding for you and you and you and you and me. All right. When the devil accuses us, He said, No, Father, it's covered by the blood. Yes. It's covered. Don't go out. It's yeah. covered. That's your child. It's covered by the blood. Why? Satan is still busy. We need to remember, as I told us the Sunday so ago, Christ is our battle axe yes. in the time of battle. Right. Mm -hmm. He's the beginning and the end. And no matter what comes up, he can handle the matter. Mm -hmm. No, 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 that's wrong. No matter what comes up, he's already handled. Yes. 
the man. He's our bridge over troubled water. Yes, yes. And we're going to have troubled waters on this side. Well, how is he our bridge over troubled water? Why? He's over the water, not in the water. We're in the water. Trust the one who walks over the water. Yes. Did you notice when the disciples were in, out on the Sea of Galilee and the storm came up? It said Jesus came walking out there. Did you notice? On the water. Not in the water, on the water. This same Christ is still walking on the water for you and I today. Right. So no matter what our trouble is, he is handling that it for us. And I know sometimes it seems like we're going to be Amen. overtaken by the storm. Amen. I know sometimes life gets hard. Sickness comes and attacks our physical bodies. And we wonder, well, what's the end going to be? Sometimes debt destroys a family. Relationships destroy a family. Children go away with it. Sometimes the storm seems like it's going to overshadow us. But what we have to remember, he's our shelter in the time of the storm. No matter how the storm makes, he's still our He's our protection over us. But we gotta trust him. We gotta believe in him. Ephesians 6 tells us, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Why? Because my strength and my might won't do it. My strength and my might just won't do it. I've got to put my trust in someone who's much stronger than I will ever be. Someone that I can trust. And the way I do that is remember that the battle is not mine, it's the Lord's. It's not mine, it's the Lord's. I've got to allow Christ to do the fighting. So when the devil shows up on your job, in your household, in your neighborhood, in your friend circle, just remember, right. it's not the person that you're dealing with right there, but it's the spirit of the devil inside that person. Right. It's a time like that. You've got to deal with it in a spiritual fact. Go down on your knees. Yes, yes. Call it for what it is. It is straight out of the pits of hell. Save it straight out of the pits of hell. Go down on your knees. Pray about the matter. Yeah. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. Hold on to the horns of the altar until you get a breakthrough. Let's let our fighter do the fighting for us. He said, but you know what? We have a responsibility too. We have a responsibility too. If you notice, I had a my regalia this morning from one of the military units that I'm part of. But it's just regalia to represent the unit. God said, you've got Miguel, you're also not need you to put on. I don't want you to just go out there and just stand up. I want you to get dressed up first of all. He yes. said, put on the whole armor of God. Yes, yes. He said, put on the whole. Why? Because you may have to stand at that point. Because the devil's going to continue attacking you again and again and again and again. Put on the whole armor of God. Yes. He said, stand, therefore stand with the belt of truth fastened around your waist. Yes. Be true first of all to yourself and then to the Lord. All right, all right. That's why I said put the bell of truth on first before yeah. you ever think about going to battle. Put the truth of God's word on around you. Yeah. That way you know you'll always be saved. Then it said put on the breastplate of righteousness. What do you mean? Stop worrying about how they do you. You just do right yourself. God will handle the matter. Amen. When they get out of line, don't you try to put them back? Folk called me very recently because they had trouble with their pastor. Reverend Doc, what you think we ought to do? I said, I think y'all need to leave alone. Amen. All right. I said, I think y'all need to leave alone. All right. well, what do you mean? He's doing it. Listen, God sent that man over there. Yeah. And if God sent him over there, God will take care of himself. Well, we don't like it. It ain't about you. All right. All right. Nothing's going on over there. I told him that God's not allowed to. Maybe he's rather trying to correct the pastor. God trying to put you out in line. Leave that man alone and let God work it out. I said, but you'll tell you something. You need to be careful. Right. The scripture tells us touch not God's anointed. Do a service, no harm. You better watch yourself over there and all the stuff you're hey, talking. Hey. Well, Rabbi, we don't want to talk to you. That's fine. I, I'm going to just tell you the truth. We don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> I'm good with that. I ain't got no problem with that. Why? I told you what thus says the word of God. Right. And that's what you better learn to deal with. Okay. He also said, shoot yourself. With the shroud of, of, of peace. Well, well. 
No matter where you're walking. No matter where you're walking, there's always some stuff. There's always some stuff. You've got to be careful where you walk, but also you've got to cover your feet properly. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. He said, as you proclaim the gospel of peace, that means if you're going to go proclaim the gospel of peace, you're going to be going to a place where you don't want to go. Right. So keep in mind, well, strap those okay. shoes on tightly. Why? God's going to send you someplace where you really don't right. want to go. God's not concerned about where you want to go. He's concerned about where you need to, where he needs you to go. Right. The rest is true. If you don't go, he's going to send somebody else. But you'll be sure blessing in the process. He said also, take the shield of faith. Yeah. Take the shield of faith. Why? Because the devil's going to be continually shooting at you, trying to hit you. Yeah. Right. I mean, little arrows. Did you notice those fire? They call them fiery darts. Why? They're not too big. That's why he, after they tell you about that hell of salvation, you got to put it on right. All right. You see these boys walking around here today, the heads turned sideways, heads turned backwards. Put that salvation hell on the wrong side. One of them dogs going to pop you too. Man. One of them dogs going to pop you in the wrong place. Put it on correctly, the helmet of salvation. He also said, take on the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Right. Don't you remember in the garden when the devil came to Jesus? He said, it's written. Amen. It's written. Amen. It's written. Amen. He put the Word of God on it. And that's what we have to do. Put the word of God on the devil whenever he comes. All right. And don't think when you put the word on, he's going to leave you alone. I told you once before, it, even in the garden, it said he left Jesus for a season. If he left Jesus for a season, guess what he's going to do to us? He's going to come back again and again and again and again. But after you get all the whole lot on, keep in mind one thing. Amen. It only covers the front. It all covers the front. What do you mean, preacher? God don't intend for you to be retreating to the rear. Because when you do, right. you need to get rear exposed. He says, stand. Stand and face the battle. Yes, yes. It doesn't matter how gloomy it seems. Amen. Stand and face the battle anyhow. Yes. Right. God has already won the battle. Yes, the victory is ours. Yes. So don't be disturbed by war. Don't be disturbed by war. God has already fought the battle for us. Yeah. He's done all that needs all to be done. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes, continue to celebrate Veterans Day, but celebrate it with a joy, a little pep in your step, yeah. knowing that you haven't got to fight these battles anymore. Lord, I thank you I've fought enough battles, and you know what? Each one of us are veterans. All right. We all yeah. been fighting something one time or another in our life. Yeah. So we have a lot to celebrate with all the war veterans, too, because we have wars in our life, too. Yeah. But we can thank the Lord. He said to us, come unto me all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will all give right. you rest. Amen. He wants to give us rest. Amen. And we can study war no more. Yes, yes. What we need to do is lay our burdens down. Yes. There's no need of carrying that load. We need to lay all our right. burdens down. Why? Because the Lord said, trust me. Lead not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge me. And I will direct your path. Right. Mm -hmm. God is waiting on us. We're not waiting That's on right. him. That's right. He's already given us his word. He's already given us his word. So yes, yeah, celebrate this Veterans Day. Yeah. But thank God that you're a veteran also. That you survived some wars also. Right. Which war you survived? I don't know which one it was. It might have been a bad relationship. It might have been a bad situation on your job. It might have been some selfish neighbors. It might have been some inconsiderate friends. But when you think about it, the Lord brought you through it. The Lord brought you through it. And that's what we need to do. He said to Israel, look back. Look back at what? Look where I brought you from. Look where I brought you from. And no matter who we are, look back at the war Amen. that God brought us through. Look back at where he brought us from. Sometimes we don't even know how we're going to get here. He brought us around, through and over. Somehow he got us where we are today. So we need to just look back at where he brought us from. And we have nothing but thanks to give him. 
nothing but thanks to give him for all he's done, all he's doing, and all he will continue to do. If we trust him enough to let him fight the battle, to let him be our battle axe, he will handle it all for us. Do we have something to do? Yes, we still have something to do ourselves. We tell our part to play. Did you notice he told us to put on the armor? He didn't say nothing about going to battle. He just said, put it on. In other words, get dressed up. Get dressed up. Because if you put on the armor, that shows him I trust you. I trust you. What do you mean? I trust you enough to do what you said. You just put it on. Lord, I got it on. Now you can fight my battles. All right. Do you trust me enough to put it on today? Why? Because I told you the devil's not through with you. Not through me either. There's some more battles coming. All right. Some more battles coming. And we need to get dressed up before they get here. My mother used to tell us all the time growing up, I'm sure she did a corner corner phrase, <coughs> prepare for war in time of peace. Prepare for war in time of peace. Why well, it's coming. Am I a pronosticator of gloom and doom? Nope, I'm just telling you, these are the facts. It's coming. It's just a matter of time. It might be on your way home from church today. It might be on your way to work tomorrow morning. It might be while you're sitting right there. The devil trying to invade your mind. It's just a matter of time. War. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm going to run on. See what the end going to be. I'm going to run on. See what the end will be. See what the end will be. Something at the end is waiting for me. I'll be about praying. See what the end will be. 